I wanted to talk a little bit about several of our police officers within the Oklahoma City Police Department that have been attacked recently in very violent encounters. And I want these type of incidents to be brought to more attention of the public. There's a lot of things that we talk about when we talk about criminal justice reform and nonviolent offenders. And I think sometimes the true stories, the things that really happen, uh, not only to our police officers, but within our community, sometimes get lost in that conversation and lost in the shuffle. Um, for example, we have a recent encounter with one of our officers, Officer Page, with a suspect by the name of Christopher McFeeters. This particular individual had been arrested more than once for assault and battery on a police officer and had been sentenced. He also currently had a warrant out for his arrest as a result of one of his assault and battery offenses on a police officer. These were offenses that had happened in multiple locations around the state and not just here in Oklahoma City. When our officer went out on this individual, he had no idea what he was encountering. He, all he knew is he had an individual that he was being flagged down by some folks and this individual was obviously um, in some type of situation where he was angry and uh, just wanting a confrontation. Come here. Come here. Come here. Four seconds per night. Start another unit. Come here. Four seconds per night. He's right in front of me. You better stop. Go! 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 Stomach. Roll to your stomach. Get your head. I need IMSA. Hey. Start IMSA. He cut me with a piece of glass. If you think about too what's been happening just here in Oklahoma City, um, we've had several officers that have been assaulted over the last year. In one of those cases I recently spoke out against where one of our officers was actually shot by an individual. The bullet, fortunately, was stopped by his protective vest, but he was shot in the center of his chest and that individual went before a judge and received a six-year sentence on a blind plea deal with time already served in prison or in jail. And because of that, theoretically, he could spend as little as three to four years in prison for shooting at a police officer. And I just want you in the community to understand that these type of things have consequences. Our officers are having to deal with a wide variety of very difficult situations, and oftentimes the individuals that they deal with are violent. And we need to make sure when those encounters occur that those folks are held accountable. When you have an individual, such as who Officer Page just encountered, who has had multiple or had more than one assault and battery on a police officer uh, arrest and conviction, um, it makes you wonder why that person was not in jail for a longer amount of time and how he was able to be out on the streets roaming around and able to do this again. Officer Page was seriously injured. Um, he almost lost his eye. He could have been killed when uh, Mr. McFeeters was, uh, was interviewed. He stated that his intent was to kill the officer, was to kill Officer Page. And you'll see in the video that this was a very violent encounter. So I just want the public to understand a little bit more about what our officers are dealing with, the importance of making sure that dangerous individuals are kept from society so that they cannot do more harm. Um, and it's not just our police officers. If someone is willing to attack a police officer in this manner, they sure will have no hesitation in attacking one of our residents. So thank you for the opportunity to talk to you today and I hope this will help um, open your eyes a little bit and maybe clear up some of the misconceptions about what our officers are dealing with on a daily basis.